Um, hi, everybody. So I'll start in English because I do know that we got some international guests. So first of all, unfortunately, I will not answer the question whether Bitcoin will go up or down. That's not the point of the presentation, but I just wanted to discuss a little bit more uh, the whole ecosystem from the 40,000 feet height to see where it's going. Because uh, the fundamental development that the crypto technology gave us is way beyond just the Ethereum or the Bitcoin and the ability to speculate. So I did try to combine extremely important question for today is how to deal with inflation. Uh, no secret that both European Union and the United States uh, are suffering massive inflation. We're looking into 8% uh, per annum. Uh, and that's, that's crazy. That's like really crazy. If you look at the uh, mandates for both European Central Bank and the Federal Reserve System of the US, they do guarantee us this is not a right, this is not an option, this is a guarantee of living uh, in the 2% per year inflation range. That's a guarantee encoded in the, in the law. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we're not living in that world. So first of all, uh, probably you've read a lot of finger pointing. Inflation is because of the war. Inflation is because of the COVID. This, that, this, that. Wrong. Uh, I don't really get it because if you go to the economic university, the first thing they teach you, really first thing, is very simplistic. Uh, if there's a lot of money in the economy, prices go up. Period. Simple as that. So um, two graphs I wanted to share. Uh, one is how, in real world, the governments are fulfilling on the promise of guaranteeing us 2% inflation. So you see European Union space, you see U.S. space, and you see the pace at which new money is being printed. And definitely you see the cusps. Like what happens uh, when governments realize they need more cash? More money, more money. So $16 trillion printed in the U.S., $2 trillion printed in the European Union. Uh, and the left graph actually shows another dependency, which I think is, is, is a really massive signal, is a really clear warning for us, uh, is, look, in 1972, uh, U.S. ended the last gold standard on the planet. So 1972, we promised that, hey, guys, you can bring us a dollar, and we will give you a certain amount of gold for the dollar. Uh, that just was broken. That promise was broken, and apparently the governments explained, hey, like, uh, uh, economy is growing, uh, we will back the economy with uh, economy, with promises, with everything. Sorry for my word, bullshit. Never happened. What in reality happened, look at the dark blue line and the light blue line. So those represent uh, the returns on the progress and economic development of the world, for two fundamental classes of the humankind. The capital, that's investments, that's the capitalists, that's the ones actually who own uh, everything. The land, the, the factories, uh, the rights, etc., etc., and the labor, the light blue. Those actually who work with your physical hands, with your brains, with your creativity. So, coincidentally or not, but that was the year where essentially the whole progress of the humankind stopped to increase a return on labor. So uh, this graph represents the weighted by inflation return on capital and the labor, and the interpretation is very simple. Last 50 years, uh, anybody working with real hands and real brain and creativity, imagination, etc., basically received flat compensation. So the hourly rate for any kind of work, on average, weighted by inflation, has been flat. What happened in return? The capital side and the government side of the equation got exponential up. So the reading of that graph is extremely simple. The new financial system, whatever has been promised, in reality earns governments because they got money to fund deficits, to fund wars. And apparently, the capital side of the equation will say very well. Because if you happen to be the investor as opposed to worker, uh, you're doing really well. Again, there were some signals that uh, during the pandemic, when the economy shrank and a lot of people lost their jobs, the top 10 wealthiest people doubled their wealth. 
So these are the kind of uh, episodes, uh, but it all goes down to extremely simplistic statement is unfortunately the governments cannot manage finances, period. They simply mismanage them. Uh, it goes completely against what's declared, what's the goals, what the values. So what I will do today, today, by the way, uh, if you look at the Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. ecosystems, we are way not ready to replace the whole finance system. It's way more complex because it goes much beyond just payments. Uh, it goes into regulations. It goes into, uh, into company management. It goes into a lot of life aspects. So uh, the bad thing is right now, at this point, we are simply not yet ready to replace everything. Now, the good news is that uh, technology has all the building blocks. Every single one building block is there. Uh, and uh, it's just an, a matter of time when those blocks are combined. And there is an alternative. I'm not necessarily saying that uh, it will come in the next 10 years or 50 years or whatever. But I'm saying that there is an alternative that uh, on the theoretical side actually promises a better way to manage finances. Uh, and today in the next half of the presentation, I will basically go through, through all the building blocks and building elements just to give you high level, what I call keywords, uh, uh, in different parts of the ecosystem that you can, if you're interested, for Google, explore, uh, develop, etc. because I do find it remarkable how right now the technology is actually giving us that ability to, to build new kind of finances. So these are the building blocks. I will quickly go through them. One is the technological slash philosophical concept called decentralization. It's a concept. It's not a technology itself. It's a concept, philosophical thinking, if you will, which basically says as opposed to government or corporation-controlled solutions, clouds, infrastructures, etc., there could be something which is decentralized, owned by everybody and nobody. Great example, Bitcoin. Not a single human kind, human uh, is actually working in the ecosystem yet, uh, it operates uh, nearly flawlessly. Next comes the infrastructure. So probably many of you have heard the term Web 3.0. Uh, again, it's a conditional labeling uh, representing basically the idea that Web 1.0 was uh, open democratic but extremely simplistic. Web 2.0 came with the Facebooks and Clouds and Googles, etc. came advanced yet dependent because corporations control on the one hand, the privacy issues, uh, the control, etc., the taxes on the economy, uh, and the governments, GDPRs, uh, censorship, uh, blockage of the science and services, etc., etc. So a lot of people are saying, hey, like Web 2.0 is advanced, yet spoiled. Nothing like original internet was. So the concept came 3.0, which basically means to represent it's both advanced and independent and open, just as the original 1.0. So it's a collective concept, but it basically covers the standards, the technical standards, the technologies, uh, uh, pieces of infrastructure that actually yield uh, as a whole. Next can be tokenization, and this is where many of you become, become probably nervous because many of you probably have bought multiple tokens, etc. So token has become uh, a container, a user interface for a lot of services. Uh, you can buy a token that represents a voting right. You can buy a token that actually represents an investment. You can buy a token that represents you this or that. So as of now, uh, the very simplistic way of interacting with the new world is basically for a token, which typically is managed for wallets, exchanges, etc. So tokenizing everything became a big thing. Uh, you can probably find a lot of sources. You can tokenize art, you can tokenize uh, assets, you can tokenize real estate, you can tokenize your career, etc., etc. So tokenization became big, uh, and apparently it became an easy interface uh, to interact with all of those functionality that the new financial world gives you. Uh, DApps became the next iteration of the tokenization, so we're talking about much more complex uh, applications. Uh, DApps, by the way, stands for decentralized apps. So it gives you an ability to, uh, in ideal case, recreate a lot of services, social networks, messaging, uh, interaction platforms, etc. Uh, again, it's a collective concept. It builds on infrastructure, etc., etc. But basically, it gives you a new way to uh, interact with technology, which is both reliable, secure, but also independent. 
And then two interesting concepts came in. So one is uh, DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. So the society and the community behind the, again, uh, uh, all this new finances world realized that even the things like company, corporation, shares, etc., uh, uh, etc., et is limited in many ways. So the new concept came in saying, hey, like, ah, as opposed to company, it's the community. Or even no people at all, just the code that could uh, act as a company and basically be an agent uh, through which you actually build, uh, develop services, run economics, etc. And then the ultimate king uh, came a currently completely topical philosophical kind of uh, uh, idea that ultimately could hire individual government services identity, uh, security, health coverage, social security, infrastructure, etc., as pieces. So you simply order different pieces. Hey, I want a passport, so I buy in a service uh, which runs my identity, etc., etc. So cumulatively, those pieces, if combined, uh, interestingly, they do cover every single aspect for the modern financial system. Not everybody is in, currently in the stage of development where you could actually productize yet, but cumulatively, again, they do sound very promising. So now I will scan through all of them. I do take it that the, found, uh, that the organizers of the conference uh, uh, can share a presentation, so if you're curious, you can drill more or you're welcome to take pictures. But these are the pieces uh, with, again, most important blocks for each of those areas. Decentralization. The keywords are, it's distributed, uh, it's encrypted, so privacy, security first. It's trustless, means uh, the code is the law. You don't have to trust people, you don't have to trust organizations. Uh, everything's there. It's unconditional, means uh, nobody can control, nobody can apply censorship, etc. cetera. Uh, second is infrastructure. Apparently, it consists of several blocks. One is the transactional. So smart contracts and protocols. Uh, it's a distributed continuous ledger, which basically stores all the sensitive information uh, and provides a point of reference. Uh, it's the decentralized storage. So many of you probably are familiar with the torrents-like protocols, but there are more advanced versions of that. So basically, it grants you access to data uh, uh, in a decentralized way, again, which is independent on anybody. And apparently, the discovery. Again, it could be. Uh, delinked from companies like Google or Facebook or Apple, and it could be built on the infrastructure. So these are the most important pieces uh, infrastructure itself. Uh, again, tokenization builds on a couple of kind of basic principles. One is definitely it follows the open standards. Uh, it's very secure. Uh, it's uh, typically, until now, has primarily been used through wallets or exchanges. Uh, and apparently, it had to be connected to various other pieces uh, for liquid protocols, providing liquidity, uh, swappability, exchange, etc., which provided by the exchanges. So these are the most common keywords uh, uh, you will come across in that specific topic. Uh, DApps, uh, as I mentioned, this is the kind of new paradigm. So if you thought of uh, you know, Google.com or Facebook.com as typical web 2.0 product, so the DAP or the DAP products, uh, again, could potentially completely recreate those, uh, yet missing a little bit of the uh, uh, say capacity uh, and the technical abilities, but they are built on web standards. So the good news is everything that the web, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, etc., has been built on is applied. So you don't have to learn uh, uh, again. It's decentralized. It's built on all the decentralized infrastructure. Uh, it has built-in unconditional economics for cryptocurrencies, uh, and apparently it's most private and secure. So neither corporation, nor the government, nor your neighbor, nor the system administrator, uh, uh, nobody knows anything uh, and everything they don't need to know. Uh, DAO, again, is built on the community standards, as opposed to standard workers, shares, registered corporations, companies, etc. Uh, it could be completely autonomous, means operating without a single human. So it sets the world up very well for the human-less economics of the future, where basically the capital produces itself and gives a lot of that back to humans just for free. Uh, it's mission-driven as opposed to profit-driven. So more and more you hear nowadays that profit could be only one of emissions. 
and uh, eco-friendliness, equality rights, uh, specific goals, etc., could very well be a mission attached to a specific entity. So it operates not just for financial reasons, uh, and apparently it's global. So borders, languages just disappear, because again, as the history has shown, any time you try to operate globally, the term geopolitics kicks in and allows the politicians to repaint everything they want their way. Uh, and again, the final version of that is a government as a platform. Again, currently you will probably not meet any specific requirements or specific specs, but uh, it's more like a vision versus uh, uh, an utopia versus what's available in reality. But uh, on the surface, a lot of uh, the physicists behind that concept sound really well. Uh, basically means it's open platform for people to interact with services. Again, infrastructure, security, uh, law, order, etc., etc., as opposed to specific agents. Uh, law is the code, so no interpretation, no lobbying, no uh, corruption or any other uh, elements that the human, say, uh, 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 could change that. Uh, it's built on open data, means uh, everything collecting, stored, etc., uh, and paid by the taxpayer money has to be open and available for everybody. And apparently it's operating globally uh, on the global markets. So uh, that is it. Uh, uh, I do understand we have uh, one or two minutes of questions, but for now, thank you for your attention.